Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, here to show you how to install the Samsung 990 Pro. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install it on a couple of different motherboards and the logic behind where to install it. I'm also going to show you how to install Windows on the drive or how to use it as an additional drive if you want to, and to show you how to speed test it to make sure it's running at the right speeds once you're finished. I'll show you the initial setup, and then I'm going to go into all that depth with timestamps so you can jump to the relevant point in the video if you need to. Now this motherboard can support various different drives throughout, so it actually has various ports, but I'm going to use the top one because it has a nice heat shield up here and will give us good speeds. Notice there's a thermal pad there and also a sticker which we'll need to remove first of all. Don't remove the sticker from the drive and insert it into the port at the top here, pushing it in gently, you don't force it, and then you should find you can just push it down gently here and you'll notice there's a little latch that we basically need to turn slightly so we can push it all the way down and then secure it in place. I'll show you that from a couple of different angles. You'll have noticed I left the sticker in place on this drive and I've done a video on why, but what you will need to do is to remove the sticker from the thermal pad on the heat shielding that you can see here. So this will help with the dispersal of heat and make sure that drive runs at the right speed. As mentioned, there are other ports on this motherboard, so you could install multiple drives if you want to, and those will be below that extra shielding at the bottom, so you can have multiple drives in there and have a great system set up. You can, of course, install the drive if you've already built your PC. So here you can see with a different motherboard, I'm taking it apart. Just make sure the power's all disconnected and it's not plugged into the mains. And then you can remove the shielding from the motherboard to access the ports. This ASUS motherboard has multiple ports in there. You can see I've already got another drive in and I'm slotting the 990 Pro into the bottom port. Now the speed may be affected by where you've plugged it in. So you need to refer to your motherboard manual to find out how many lanes your drive will get. And I've done a separate video which explains this in a bit more depth. I'll link to that in the description. But on most modern motherboards, you should find you'll be able to run this drive at the right speeds. And I'll show you how to test that later on in the video. Older motherboards, you might need a screw. You could see that a Zeus and Gigabyte motherboard used a clip, but here you can see an M2 screw in use. I'll leave links in the description to those if you can't find one included with your motherboard. Now I want to show you how to install Windows. If you've only installed that drive and nothing else, you might find that when you turn on your PC, it goes into the BIOS and it lists that there's no bootable device found on the system. So it just can't boot from that. So what we need to do is go about the installation process for Windows first. So on a separate machine or laptop, you want to download the Windows creation tool for Windows 11. So this is a Windows installation media tool. You're going to need a USB drive and you need to then basically run this tool on that drive. So run the tool on the drive on the PC and basically prepare it. What you're going to do is put this into the new PC that you built and then boot from it and it'll help you to install Windows onto the relevant drive. I'm going to be using the Samsung 990 Pro for the installation here. So plug the USB drive in. You can see this is a 32 gigabyte drive that I'm using, which was already formatted. But once you run the tool on it, it'll install the Windows boot tool on there. And then when you turn your PC on, it'll automatically run from that and go through the process of doing the Windows creation setup. So basically follow the on-screen instructions to install Windows 11 on there. Choose the relevant language and your keyboard setup. So obviously UK for me. US for you maybe, or wherever you are in the world. And then you want to go to custom setup. And then what we need to do is to create a new partition for Windows on there. So you might find that it's already got a partition on there that you might have to delete. So you basically clean that up. If you've got a brand new drive, you shouldn't have this problem. But if you find that it's already got partitions on there, you might need to delete them or format the drive first of all, and then go through the process of basically setting it up. So I had to delete the partitions that were there. So it was just one drive, then create a new one, and then start the process of installing it. So you can see now it will then go about this process. Now this takes quite some time to go through the installation process, but keep an eye on the bar and when it's filling up and when it's getting close to finishing. You can see here that we're right near the end and it gives you a little warning of that because what you need to do is to, once it starts to restart, pull out the thumb drive. Otherwise it will try and reboot from that creation tool. You don't want it to do that. We now will have the creation set up 
on the SSD or wherever you chose to install it. So it will go through the process of installing it on that drive and finish up installing Windows. This again takes quite some time, but you've got to follow the on-screen instructions, connect to the internet. You can see I've used an ethernet cable here, but the ethernet was working perfectly fine, as was the Wi-Fi. Sometimes you might find there are issues with Wi-Fi if you've got a different motherboard where it's not working initially. Look out for a thumb drive inside the box that might include the drivers. That might help. I've done a separate video on this. You can also play a game now while you're waiting for Windows to install, which is a new one on me. Uh, that was quite fun. So that was some brief entertainment while I was installing Windows, but it does take some time to go through this process. If you already have Windows installed on another drive and the Samsung 990 Pro is just an additional drive to your system, I'm going to show you how to get Windows to recognize it if it isn't already. So if you go into File Explorer and you can see you've got drives in there, but the new drive isn't being recognized, then what you need to do is to hit the Start button and then search for Disk and you'll see it's create and format hard disk partitions. This is one of the ways that you can access a tool. This is opening up disk management. And if you do this, you should find that initialized disk pops up because it's recognized there's a new drive there. You should see it then with a black label on it, unallocated space, right click, click new simple volume and go through the steps to basically format this drive, give it a drive letter and a label so you know what it is and then you should find that this then sets it up in Windows. If for some reason this doesn't work and it doesn't pop up, it could be a BIOS setting that you need to tweak in order to make sure that the drive is working this way. Unfortunately, there's so many different BIOS options it'll be really difficult to show you, but hopefully this management tool will help it appear. Now the next stage is testing to make sure it's running at the right speed. You can see I'm using Task Manager under the Performance tab to test the drive and get a real-time view of the speed, but also Crystal Disk Mark, which is a benchmarking tool you can use to put the drive under load. It has NVMe settings in it, and just copy what I've done here, so make sure you've selected the right drive, say it's a 64 gig, nine passes, and then let it run. What you should find is it will do several passes on here, and then it will give you a view of how fast the drive has rewrite speeds, and hopefully it should match the overall specs of the drive. If you find it significantly lower than it should be, i.e. a lot less than 7,000, for example, it could be using the wrong port. It could be something to do with the motherboard setup that sometimes if you populate too many ports, it reduces the number of lanes, which slows the drive down and other things. As I said, I've got a separate video which goes into depth explaining this in a bit more detail. So I'll link to that video in the description and hopefully that will help. But hopefully this is giving you a good insight into how to set the drive up, how to test to make sure it's working at the right speed and more. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.